Hello everyone, I am Dr. E. Naresh Kumar, Assistant Professor in the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today we are going to have a discussion on the working principle of DC motor and back EMF, back EMF significance. Now here, what is meant by DC motor? DC motor is a machine which converts from electrical energy to the mechanical energy. That electrical energy is DC supply. Now, what about the DC generator? Same construction for DC generator and DC motor, but the working principles are different. Here, the machine which converts from mechanical energy to the electrical energy is known as a DC generator. That electrical energy is DC electrical energy. So now here the working principles are different. What, what is the principle of DC generator? The Faraday's law of electromagnetic uh, induction according to the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Uh, Dynamic and, and dynamically induced EMF e is directly proportional to the d5 by dt. Rate of change of flux is directly proportional to the EMF. This is Faraday's first law and directly proportional to the d5 by dt is Faraday's second law. Now here um, the working principle of DC motor. So the working principle of DC motor is very simple. Here uh, uh, Whenever current carrying conductor placed in a stationary magnetic field, it experiences a mechanical force towards a particular direction. That is the working principle. And Lorentz force law is also working. Lorentz force line Fleming's left hand rule here. So now here, uh, uh, according to this, so uh, here this is the uh, to explain this working play principle. Let us take one simple elementary model of DC uh, motor. First, here in between, in this model, uh, in between two opposite poles, that is north pole and south pole, one single turn conductor is placed between two opposite poles. This is simple elementary model of DC motor. So, to um, now start supplying DC to this DC motor. So, now here from the north pole to the south pole. Flux lines always flows from north pole to the south pole. Here st now start supplying DC to this one. So now here supply. Supply is given uh, from the cell. So supply or battery. So now here start supplying DC to this one. So now here if you give the supply to this single turn conductor. So current flows in this circuit. So now here current flows like this. So current flows in this direction. Current flows in this direction. So now current flows like this and there is a closed path. There is a closed path means current flows. If you give the supply from the power cell through the commutator system, these are the commutating systems and brushes. So now current flows in this direct, uh, in this, uh, in this circuit. So now at this position, uh, we see here in the model. So first here, positive terminal of the battery is connected to the left side of the conductor that is A and B and negative terminal of the battery is connected to the right side of the conductor that is C and D. This is D. Moreover, we see here in the model, so north pole of the magnet is placed at uh, left side and south pole of the magnet is placed at right side. And current flows in the Left side conductor is AB, uh, uh, is inverse direction, is inverse direction and current flows in the CD direction is outwards direction, is inverse direction and outwards direction. Now, both the conductors are carrying current and placed in a stationary magnetic field according to the motor principle Lorentz force line uh, Fleming's left hand rule. So now here, uh, both the conductors experiences a mechanical force towards a particular direction. Conductors are carrying conductors AB and CD and placed in a stationary magnetic field flux and experiences a, both the conductors turn experiences a mechanical force towards a particular direction. That mechanical force is determined by Fleming's left hand rule. So this is the Fleming's left hand rule here. So if you stretch out here so thumb finger according to the this one thumb finger forefinger and middle fingers are right angles to the each other so thumb direction 
middle finger direction, four finger direction and middle finger direction. So here four finger direction indicates the flux direction here, flux that is from north pole to the south pole from this here in this direction and this this direction middle finger direction is the current direction this current direction and this thumb direction indicates the motion of the conductor here for three fingers thumb thumb finger four finger and middle fingers are right angles to the each other here four finger indicates the flux direction that is magnetic field direction from the north pole to the south pole and this middle finger direction indicates the current flowing through the conductor and this thumb direction indicates the flux uh, motion of the conductor. So now here for this AB conductor and for this CD conductor apply Fleming's left, left, uh, left hand rule. So how um, here in the AB conductor in the AB conductor and in the CD conductor. In the AB conductor, uh, this is the thumb direction, this one is the four finger direction and this one is the middle finger, thumb, four finger and middle finger. So now here, four finger direction is a magnetic field direction always flows from north pole to the south pole. Is this okay? So this is the flux direction from the north pole to the south pole direction. north pole to the south pole and next current direction so current middle finger indicates the current direction here in the ab conductor current flows inwards and cd conductor current flows outside so now here current flows inwards direction here so here current flows in the inverse direction here this is fleming's left hand rule so now here first this is from north pole to the south pole. Here current flows inwards. Current flows inwards. This is the flux direction. This current is inverse direction. So middle finger direction is inverse direction. Inverse direction. And here this one. This is inverse direction. And this one is downwards direction downwards direction if you apply fleming's left hand rule for this ab conductor so now here this is the this is the flux direction current is inverse direction and flux uh, this motion of the conductor is downwards direction and same way if you apply fleming's left hand rule for this uh, cd conductor so here's for the cd conductor so flux lines flows from north pole to the south pole that is four finger and middle finger direction is outward direction, outwards direction, CD is outwards direction from this screen and next here CD conductor, so CD conductor motion is upwards, is upwards, is upwards. Now here we have one downwards mechanical force and the other one is upward mechanical force. Due to this upward and downwards mechanical force, one torque is produced which tends to rotate the turn in anti-clockwise direction. So one torque will be generated in anti-clockwise direction. So after clockwise rotation of 90 degrees, so after clockwise rotation of 90 degrees, the turn continue, uh, the turn the turn is at rest position. So end brushes are rest equity. There is no current here. Current is zero and there is no force acting on this here. But due to the moment of inertia, the turn continues to rotate and comes to the horizontal position again. But here the positions of the conductors left side and uh, right side conductor AB and CD have been interchanged. Here this is C and D, this is A and D. The positions of the conductors has been interchanged here. The conductor which was placed previously at left side comes to the right side and the conductor which was placed previously at right side comes to the left side. 
now same thing here now again horizontal position but positions have been interchanged the conductor positions now apply fleming's left hand rule again for cd conductor and for ab conductor positions have been interchanged now here if you apply fleming's left hand rule same thing fleming's left hand rule again this direction of mechanical force cd and ab is again determined by fleming's left hand rule here thumb finger middle finger uh, middle finger and four fingers are right angles to the, each other this four finger indicates the uh, flux direction that is from north pole to the south pole middle finger indicates the current direction this one flux direction that is from north pole to the south pole this is the current direction middle finger direction and this is the motion of the conductor so now if you apply this cd conductor here current flows is inverse if you apply here this one here current flows is inverse and this current flows is in outwards direction so now here here like this so now here this is from north pole to the south pole conductor uh, sorry flux direction from the north pole current flows is inverse and this is downwards mechanical force if you apply Fleming's left hand rule for CD conductor and here for AB conductor if you apply uh, uh, AB conductor Fleming's left hand rule this is the upward mechanical force this is the downwards mechanical force. one downwards mechanical force and one upward mechanical force due to this upward and downward mechanical force again torque will be generated so one torque generates which tends to rotate in anti-clockwise direction in anti-clockwise directions now here from this explanation we can conclude that so now here from this ex whichever conductor whichever conductor comes under the let me change the color over here whichever conductor whichever conductor a b or c d whichever conductor comes under the so north pole will get the downwards mechanical force and whichever conductor comes under the south pole will get the upward mechanical force due to these upward and downward mechanical forces the single turn conductor continues to rotate until the battery is disconnected until the battery is disconnected in case of practical DC motor, in place of single turn conductor, there may be a multi armature coils and in place of uh, two poles, there may be an even number of poles. So, poles may be always 2, 4, 6 and 8, 10, even number of poles. In the practical DC motor, even number of poles and here in place of single turn conductor, there may be multi armature coils this is same thing here conductor rotates in anti-clockwise direction now when torque is generated the torque equation so already we uh, uh, this torque equation formula the derivation uh, uh, i will explain in the next lecture so the torque equals to 1 by 2 pi z phi i a into p by a so now here the parameters now this 1 by 2 pi means that is 0 0.159 here so the parameters here this flux indicates the flux per pole that is in webers and next here z is the total number of conductors so the total number of conductors means number of slots and number of armature conductors or slots and next here A is the number of parallel paths and P is the number of poles in this number of poles and T is the torque developed on the single turn uh, conductor uh, the armature and next A is the armature current A is the armature current so now here A equals to 2 for wave winding so armature winding connections are two types lap winding connection and wave winding connection for the wave winding this number of parallel paths a equals to 2 and a equals to t per wave winding simplex 
wave winding and simplex lap winding. Now here back EMF. What is mean by back EMF? Back EMF means now here in the DC motor, DC motor if you give the electrical supply, if you give the DC supply to this uh, armature conductors and mechanical energy will be developed on the shaft. This is mechanical energy and this one is a electrical energy which converts from electrical energy to the mechanical energy is known as a DC motor. So now if you give the electrical energy to this armature conductors, so now this is the um, current carrying conductor and current carrying conductor cuts the armature, uh, current carrying conductor placed in a stationary magnetic field, it experiences a mechanical force and torque will be generated. So now this uh, mechanical energy drives the mechanical load and here conductor is rotating, conductors are rotating here. Conductors are rotating, this conductor, this shaft is rotating and conductors are rotating. And now here again generator action takes place in this here, E is directly proportional to the d phi by dt. So again torque is, uh, torque, uh, this mechanical energy means this again mechanical conductors are rotating. So now rotating conductor placed in a stationary magnetic field according to the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and dynamically induced EMF. That induced EMF will be developed in the armature conductors. That induced EMF will be developed in the armature conductor E is directly proportional to the d phi by dt. So that induced EMF E equals to z n phi by 60 into p by e. Z is the total number of conductors and n is the speed of the armature and flux is flux flux per pole and P is the total number of poles and A is the number of parallel paths. A equals to 2 for wave winding and A equals to uh, P for lap winding. So this is the back EMF not induced EMF because of the generating action here induced EMF will be developed that is back EMF. We, we can call it as back EMF or counter EMF. Counter EMF, back EMF or counter EMF. So now here, so back EMF, uh, it is a, so now see the definition. The counter voltage across the armature winding is called a, called as a back EMF. So now what about the significance? So significance of, so now here because of this back EMF, um, uh, the, uh, this back EMF, um, uh, presence of back EMF makes the uh, DC motor, makes the DC motor self-regulating device, self-regulating machine. Because of this uh, presence of back EMF, the DC uh, motor, so makes the uh, DC motor presence of back EMF makes the DC motor uh, self-regulating machine. So how it will, uh, how it uh, controls the, uh, how it regulates the uh, DC machine. So, so it is, so now first one. So what are the, so when uh, motor is running at no load, when motor speed of the motor gets increased or decreasing. So now here, here what will happen? So now here self-regulating machine means, so now here, so let me change here, so first here, this back EMF makes the DC motor, makes the DC motor to draw the as much armature current as is uh, just uh, just uh, satisfying the uh, to produce sufficiently produce the uh, torque required by the load so how it will happen when the motor is running on the no load when the motor is running on the no load means there is no load no load on the machine 
So there is no load on the machine means small amount of torque. Here torque equals to 0 0.159 Z phi IA into P by A. We know this, we know very well this formula. So now here the torque is very small amount of torque is required to overcome the windage and frictional losses on the shaft side here small amount of torque so this small amount of torque because of this small amount of torque there may be a small amount of armature current small amount of armature current means so we know this formula eb equals to v minus ia ra now ia equals to v minus eb by ia so here so small amount of armature current means here so almost v equals to eb supply voltage equals to back emf now here second case so here when speed of the motor gets decreases so speed of the motor get decreases means eb is directly proportional to the n always here so speed of the eb is directly proportional to the n speed of the motor decreases so now here what will happen here uh, this rotor this uh, this rotor uh, this armature uh, this armature uh, rotor uh, rotates slowly and the speed decreases and this back emf decreases so back emf decreases means here so back emf decreases means this armature current this back emf decreases means armature current increases so armature current increases means torque will increases so now here what will happen here motor so this back emf uh, makes the uh, device the uh, dc machine uh, here what will happen it draws high amount of uh, current and high amount of torque when motor uh, decreases the back emf when motor increases the uh, motor speed increases this speed increases and back emf is also increases and this back emf decrease uh, increases means here this overall this one this uh, this drop is decreases and armature current decreases armature current decreases means torque will be decreases it controls the back emf controls the armature current so armature current controls means it regulates the armature current and next thing here uh, the torque is also controls to meet the load demand here load may be a increased speed or decreased speed or no load condition so now this is the working principle of dc generate dc motor and back emf and back emf significance if you still have any doubts in this lecture I hope this all these concepts are clear to you. If you still have any doubts in this lecture, you can comment in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries. Thank you. Thank you very much to you all. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.